BioBalance HealthCast, episode 226, Testosterone and Sex. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Bow Balance HealthCast. I'm Brett Newcomb and this is Dr. Kathy Maupin and we are the authors of the book, The Secret Female Hormone, which was published by Hay House a year ago next month. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that publication, Dr. Maupin was asked to give a presentation to an international medical conference that was held in Orlando of age management medicine uh, specialists. And mm-hmm. these are doctors from around the world that are beginning to focus their medical interests and practice on what they can do, what we can learn, what we can know, what we can do to make the aging process a healthier process where people have more functional lives for all of the time that they have, whatever that may be. It's preventive medicine, mm-hmm. but it is based on what happens when we age, what what hormone what are the mechanisms what of hormone action? goes away first, right? And replacing the hormones and all and nutrition and I mean it's not just hormones, exercise and and preventing heart disease. All of those things right. are are embraced by this society of doctors and it's not really recognized yet by the AMA which is an unusual thing I guess but the AMA is very traditional right. and this is new thought which is what everybody wants because we aren't happy with our medical care as as it stands right now we want to be healthier longer we're that we were that generation we're never going to grow old. We're never going to die. So uh, basically, so, uh, so this is the group that your insurance company says, "Oh, that's all an experimental procedure, right. so we don't cover it." Right, and that's a problem. And I'm yeah. I'm trying fighting by, those battles by um, so talking about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to overcome that. Trying to get somebody to recognize this as what women need. But but we're going to talk about. Um, Actually, the hormones that testosterone stimulates in both men and women, but we're talking about women today, and uh, and how they work. Okay. And uh, so testosterone is like the key that starts it. Right. It's the right. first thing to go when you start aging, and then then it's kind of like a domino effect. Everything else starts dropping, and then the outcome. Or if you get it back, it starts coming back right. online. That's yeah. Right. That's okay. right. That's right. So th- this was uh, what we're going to show you are some clips from the talk that Dr. Moffin gave to this group, because this was a group of physicians and nurse practitioners who are on the cutting edge of this kind of treatment, and they wanted information that we're providing to you in part so that if you see something in here. That, that speaks to you about your conditions in your life, you can actually ask your physician, look at this podcast, You know, would you be willing to look at it, see if there's relevance to what we're discussing about my health, and get more information about it, either from our book or, or from uh, the link uh, mm-hmm. to the talk, you can watch the talk, uh, and see if it's helpful. So we're going to begin with the hormones that testosterone impacts. That's right. Endocrine stimulator, that's, that's a thing... That what I'm referring to there is that testosterone stimulates other glands to make other hormones like growth hormone. Growth hormone is stimulated by testosterone. I always see growth hormone go up after I give testosterone. So I tell my patients, this is a twofer. You're getting growth hormone because your, your testosterone is stimulating it. And it's safe. It doesn't cause diabetes that way. It doesn't cause other diseases that way. These fibromyalgia patients have nowhere to go. No one's taking care of them. And they're being given pain meds and things like that. But they're not better. So I give, them, I give them testosterone. They always have low testosterone because they're old, usually older by the time they get to me. But even some of the young women have low testosterone. When I treat them with testosterone, they don't have pain anymore. It is miraculous, and they are so excited to be better. It's amazing. It's, it's like that with other autoimmune disorders as well. I have um, one patient who has rheumatoid arthritis. And she's had it for 10 years, and she sat in a chair looking at the wall for 10 years, and she's maxed out her drugs. So I, sent, so I treated her, and I said, I can't promise you anything because I don't know how far this has gone in your joints. And she came in. I didn't recognize her. She walked in my door in my office and said, hi. You know, I'm, and I said, who? <laughs> wasn't the same person. It just wasn't. She said, I just painted the whole inside of my house. 
I am so well, and I take no other drugs but testosterone. Now, I don't expect everybody to get that, but that was a miracle, and that was just testosterone and a little bit of estrogen. It made all the difference. And there are lots of research articles in the rheumatology journals, if you want to look. Just look at the keywords for autoimmune disorder and testosterone, and you'll find them. The hormones that are stimulated or, or uh, triggered by replacing testosterone, right. we have all those hormones when we're young, and we need to get them back as we age, but testosterone is a very efficient hormone. It actually triggers the hormones. You may have heard of some of these, so I'm, I, I may not. Uh, that's, I'm going to just give you a blurb about each one. First is calcitonin. We've talked about osteoporosis before. But calcitonin is the hormone that builds bone. Okay. So testosterone directly stimulates cal calcitonin to build bone in people. Mm -hmm. So estrogen does as well, but testosterone's better at it. And it is dose dependent. So if you take very little testosterone, it'll stimulate bone a little bit. So, because it's only going to trigger a little bit of calcitonin stimulation. So, that's one. Dihydrotestosterone is a byproduct of testosterone, and it has action on the prostate, the brain, the skin. It makes your skin look healthier. You've basically seen, seen people walking around, they look really, really pale. Not that they don't have a tan, but really gray, mm -hmm. like they're going to have a heart attack. Yes. Basically. Actually, that's, a, that's what I point out to my wife, that there's a walking heart attack. Yeah, and, and sometimes it goes along with that. If you don't have enough dihydrotestosterone, then you don't have a lot of blood flow to your skin or your brain or your prostate or mm -hmm. anything. So dihydrotestosterone helps us think it helps our skin it helps what we look like in it and the lack of it actually makes us appear ill growth hormone is really important and this is a good way to take growth hormone you take testosterone it stimulates growth hormone in everyone unless you've had a head injury every head injuries it we can't stimulate growth hormone we have to give so it, it to stimulates somebody. your production of your own growth, growth hormone, hormone so right. you don't have to take one right extra. and right. growth hormones a uh, at least a, a uh, fifteen to eighteen hundred dollar a month wow. deal, and it's a shot every day. So it would be behoove everybody and be very um, to just monetarily, use it all if they can. yeah, monetarily uh, efficient for for people to take their testosterone in high enough dose that it stimulates their growth hormone. And we follow the blood test IGF-1, but I also follow how much muscle and how lean someone gets because that's that's one of the side effects of growth hormone is to look lean and to heal well and to look younger than you are. So growth hormone is being stimulated by testosterone. Another, everybody's heard of melatonin so that you can sleep. That's one of the factors in the sleeplessness that goes along with low testosterone. Mm -hmm. You don't make enough melatonin. And melatonin is stimulated by testosterone. Melatonin also plays a part um, in melanin. Mm -hmm. Skin so, pigmentation. Yes, yeah, skin, skin pigmentation. So you actually can tan still. You've seen lots of actors who are in their 70s and they can't tan anymore or they wear so much sunscreen they don't. But still, it's, it's an issue because we always we want to absorb vitamin D and we want to feel healthy and we want to look healthy. Not being able to tan is kind of a, would be very upsetting to me. And, um, and not being able to sleep is more upsetting. <laughs> but oxytocin is another hormone. There, these are all from the pituitary or the hypothalamus or the pineal gland, all in your brain. So um, the oxytocin is the uh, hormone of orgasm, nursing, um, actually. Nursing uh, stimulates ox oxytocin? Right. Just like... Okay. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so Which does... Which is high. I mean, you get a high off of that. Uh, some people do. I didn't. But some I mean, people. I mean that personal. I no. mean, one some gets. people. So one gets. Some people yeah. get a high off of that. And oxytocin makes you feel good and makes you feel nurturing and and happy. Mm -hmm. And you know, people who are generally happy usually have the and hormones high oxytocin levels. Right. And and satisfied and and people who are nesting, you know, so have all a high of, oxytocin. All of level. these things that you're talking about. Are medicines that you can obtain individually and take well, at some cost. Right. Hormones you could take individually, right. yet the one that stimulates all of them right. is testosterone at a high enough dose because the dose is the issue. If you don't get if you take testosterone but it's such a low dose, 
that it's not going to affect or stimulate these other hormones. So how does it regulate then? If, if, if I take testosterone and I don't need melanin increased, does it leave that alone or does it make extra melanin? I mean, how, does it know what to do? Yeah, it knows what to do. It stimulates the receptor sites just like it stimulated them before. They're genetically um, arranged. So okay. if you were very pale mm -hmm. as uh, a young person, you're not going to get tanner. Okay. Okay. That's what so I was it's, asking. It, yeah. it's, there are so many steps between the hormone and the activity of the cells. Okay. Which, so it, this, is, this is like volleyball. Testosterone puts, puts the ball up. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. the other gland slams it on the other side okay. on the other side so basically <clears throat> after you get from testosterone to the other to the other gland that stimula it's being stimulated by then all of those hormones go out and attach to receptor sites so this is why you choose to use bioidentical hormones because then the body responds to the ingestion or in insertion of testosterone mm -hmm. it responds to it exactly the same way it always did when it was making testosterone mm -hmm. So that way it knows your body, it knows what you need, and it finds those levels and restores or improves them. That's right. Absolutely. And, okay. and none of the synthetics do the same thing. It's just giving your body back what you lost. Okay. That's a pretty fascinating information for me. Uh, what about fibromyalgia? Before we move on to the next topic, <clears throat> is there anything more that you want to say about it or the people that suffer from it? Pretty painful yeah, disorder. It's, it's, there's very little that doctors can do for fibromyalgia they consider it an autoimmune disease where your body is attacking your um, connective tissue and your muscles and it okay. hurts every mm -hmm. day it's a different ache mm -hmm. it's not usually joint pain it's usually muscle pain okay so it's one of those things that your immune system is hyperactive where, where joint pain would be what arthritis yeah arthritis this is muscle pain <laughs> this in different is muscle parts pains of your body. and connective tissue pain and not from working out, not from no, straining. No, just you, just resting. You have pain. Wow. And it's it it usually occurs begins in our forties, mm -hmm. or whenever we have our testosterone suppressed for some reason, like when we're on the birth control pill. Mm -hmm. Then fibromyalgia then uh, can happen at that time, but we need a good level of testosterone to modulate the immune system so that we don't attack our own tissues. It gets sensitized by bacteria and viruses that look a lot like muscle tissue. Right. Then it overreacts and attacks our own muscles. And and people who have fibromyalgia, they're depressed, they're on they're on a ton of drugs. They're on steroids right. because that's how you treat autoimmune disorders. But when they come they come to see me, I treat them with a very augmented dose of testosterone because they need it to stop the process and then we go down later but that dose actually shuts down the process of attacking the muscles and these i mean it's a miracle they've gone to lots of different doctors well for and this. it's so sad and frustrating it's, it's like being treated for depression you know when you're treated for fibromyalgia when you say I, i'm suffering from fibromyalgia or when you say i'm suffering from depression people can't see anything and after a while, <coughs> they think me. you're. They think you're. They crazy. think you're faking it. Yeah. Uh, or, or that you just don't want to clean your house, or you just don't want to go to work. Right, and that's absolutely wrong. Yeah. These are very, very active. They're legitimate very positive that are people. Devastating. And they, and when you take work away from some people, right. you take their life away. Yeah. And they, they can't live their life or be happy. They're in pain all the time. Right. And nothing really shuts that down. Except testosterone. And it's really a challenge to live with ongoing constant pain. It is. And, and not just because you feel so miserable, because all the people around you look at you and think you're a faker. And not only do you does testosterone work by changing the immune system, but it also increases your resistance to feel pain. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when we give testosterone back, you may have been very sensitive and you felt pain easily. Right. But when we bring it to a level that's that is effective that you don't have as high a pain it's, it increases your pain threshold and that's without taking any kind of narcotic right, to deaden not, the pain that's right just, and this is only with bioidentical testosterone and only non-oral okay but so so for those of you that don't know there are several different delivery mechanisms for getting testosterone and in her years of experience kathy has been exposed to or used I've all, used of, all them. of them on patients. And, and over time mm -hmm. you've determined that the one that you always prefer and always use 
unless I, I guess unless there's some exculpatory reason not to. There isn't. <laughs> is the bioidentical pellet. That's right. Yeah. It work it works the best and brings us back to normal and, and gives us our health back. It doesn't have as many side effects right. as creams, gels, and you can't get levels up very well with those. They have very short half-lives, meaning they're out of your system really fast. Right. And that gives you this up and down, up and down, up and down every day thing where your mood is different and your pain There's is no different. Consistency. And your body doesn't like that. The only right. reason I've, I've been uh, confronted by people that say, I want to have the exact same hormones as when I was fertile. Right. Meaning up and down, up and down estrogen, and up and down, up and down testosterone, and progesterone only in the second half of the cycle. Right. But... And your thought is, why do you want to have all those moods? Really, yeah. yeah. That's. I mean, some people feel good with that, but in general... Well, they feel normal, because it's what they've always known. But they'll feel better when it's the same thing every day, just like men yeah. have. But this is only for childbearing. That's what that system was made for. It wasn't made for us feeling... Wonderful. It was made for or being the healthiest system. It was made for preparing the uterus for babies. Well, and all of this is explained in detail in our book, The Secret Female Hormone. So, if you're curious about what we're discussing, you can get a copy of that book. It's you can get it online. You can get it at the bookstores and see what we have to say about that. But we're going to switch now and talk about our favorite topic, which is sex. Of course. <laughs> and usually your favorite topic. Okay. That's the, that's the imperial yeah. power. We, <laughs> okay. We, we like to talk about it. But, but you, uh, we're going to show a film clip here from your talk discussing sex as an issue and libido as an issue with these positions because so many people have questions about it and often they're reluctant to discuss it with their spouse. Mm -hmm. Something has changed, something is different, something's not working. Because it's because dangerous it, because the minute you start saying something, it's like Well I may be you're threatened. If you say someone. my body doesn't want you anymore, I'm thinking you don't love me. Right. And do I need to find a new place to go? <laughs> or what am I going to be abandoned or what's going to happen? Yeah. And you're trying to say my body's like dry vagina. It, mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable. It's painful for me to have sex. It isn't that I don't want to. It's that it's painful. Well, that's an accommodation. Yes. That's an accommodation some women make. It's painful, and they grit their teeth and go for it. Which but that is doesn't not mean satisfactory they for enjoy, anybody. No. They, they enjoy well, it, and, and that doesn't mean sensitive, they want no it. Too. Exactly. Yeah, men who are sensitive actually are very hurt by the fact that yeah. women lose their desire for them. Mm -hmm. And that's one of th their woman loses desire for them, not women, <laughs> not in, women general. in general. Yeah. Uh, but but that's one of those things that we we take a medical problem or a hormonal problem, which uh, is the loss of it, and then we make it a an emotional and social problem, and then people split. If you look at where families dissolve, it's in the 40s, right. in their right. 40s, especially late 40s, and that's not just because the kids go to college. That's because in general, since I've been taught, I can, this is not from a study, this is from my it's like a perfect own storm. experience. These things happen this is altogether. what people in my GYN practice, thousands of women would come in and say, you know, I just don't feel it. I yeah. just don't feel it. And before I had a good Tired answer. Going through the motions. Yeah, and he's and he still wants it and I just don't know what to do. So I just told him to forget it. And then the next thing the year they come in, they go, Well, I'm getting a divorce. Yeah. I mean, you don't even when you don't have a sex drive, you don't even realize most women don't, some do. It's hard to have compassion and sympathy for somebody that does. Right. right. It's kinda of like fibromyalgia and, and chronic pain and <laughs> depression. It's you can't see it. There are so many social issues that are caused by the well, lack of testosterone. It's really, it's really amazing that and, no one's. And that's it what up. you talk about in these ne in these next couple of, of segments. Uh, your view about sex and our culture, and what those messages are. So let's look at those. My view on sex is that everybody deserves to have sex their whole life. It's not like you're 40 and it's over, which is what all the younger people think. Or, I mean, not all of them, but many young people think that. And they treat us like we're over the hill or we're grossing them out if we talk about wanting a, li a libido. So testosterone is the libido, queen, king, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and it is the key to libido. If there's no abuse, if there's no sexual abuse in the history of a patient and they've always been okay with sex with this current partner, if you give them testosterone, it's back. This is, this is the key to this, and everybody acts like it's 
oh, barely works. I don't know what they're giving people, but they must not be giving them enough testosterone because it brings it back. And some of my patients who have always had low testosterone or have been on the birth control pill all the time, they get their orgasms they've never had. They've never, 30 years, they've never had an orgasm being married to the same guy. They come in and they go, I know what it is. This is awesome. Our marriage is so much better. I get flowers from their husbands, which is always nice. The current culture believes that men, well, older men marry younger women, but it's not really accepted still that older women marry younger men. So women are not sexual beings after a certain point, and that's just a shame. So part of this is that culture doesn't, our culture doesn't want to think about this. I'm not sure that that's true in Europe, but it is here. So nobody wants to talk about sex after 40 in women. So that's one of the reasons we don't get to talk, we don't hear about testosterone. Another one is it costs money. Giving testosterone to women is yet another thing the government has to pay for. So this is one of those things that, oh, we're just going to cut, cut women out of this deal like they did in England. They used to allow women in England to have both estrogen and testosterone pellets. They then 10 years ago said, oh, National Health Insurance, insurance or National Health Service has decided that it's for the worried well. Women don't really need this. We're taking it away. So all the doctors that, that were expert at this quit doing it. And I thought maybe some of them still remain, but we went to England a month ago and didn't find too many doctors in England still doing it. And that's a big shame because they really were good at that. Dr. Studd is from England. He did lots of the early research. He's still doing it, but I'm not sure where he gets his pellets because they've made it very difficult. Looking at the issue of libido and sex and testosterone is, is fascinating to me because it's such an important part of my consciousness mm -hmm. and my life. And as a therapist over 30 years in private practice, it's really important in the lives of the people that have come to see me who, mm -hmm. whose lives are not in balance the way they want them to be. And sex is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do a lot of marriage counseling. And what I find is that the weapons that people use to assault the other or defend themselves basically come down into money and sex. Mm -hmm. I control really? access to money, you control access to sex, we flip it, whatever, mm -hmm. but, but we, it's like a, a birdie in a badminton game. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we discovered when we went to London, we, we had an opportunity to go to London when our book was published to do some interviews and some Lectures. speeches. And so we did that, and we learned more in London about all of this, too, because the British have been ahead of us, and then their national health system kind of decided to cut. Ahead of us by using testosterone pellets for women. Right. And they used it for years. Right. And that was part of their national health service, and then they decided that was the that was just... Too expensive, because too many frivolous. women seemed to want it or need it. And yes. they said, not, not just for women, which leads us to the next interesting topic for yeah. me, which has to do with gender bias in medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, you assume, or I would assume, just as a citizen, that doctors and medicine and medical researchers look at human beings who are suffering. I want to know more about how the body works. I want to know more about mm -hmm. the mechanics. I want to know what to do. And that has not historically been the case. There's, there's bias in the doctor office. Uh -huh. Many males, even females, doctors, look at a patient who's suffering and say it's all in your head, see you later, so that they can get out of the room because they don't want to feel that suffering. Yeah. And women express it more. But it's also a, that's not important, you're just, you know, going back to your housework, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it is a negative thing to be a woman going to either a woman who was trained by men and, and embraced their attitude, mm -hmm. or a man who thinks that we're not as good as they are. So in training, there's gender bias because it was very hard to get into med school as a woman right. back in, in the 70s. I mean, it was like, you've got all the criteria, you've got the great grades, you've done it all, but you just don't look like a doctor. They actually said that to me. <laughs> you look like a home ec teacher. Yeah, you, need you to look like a home ec teacher. I dresses. think you should be a home ec teacher. And I, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I've yeah. done all this work for that. Yeah. So. So there was a little evolution before I got in, but I had to like, 
I had to like cut my hair and put my put my glasses on and wear dowdy clothes yeah. to actually fit it because they didn't view me as somebody who was going to be a doctor. So so that's gender bias. Then there's gender bias in in the drugs that we take. They've been researching all these drugs. They've been drugs. normed on men. Right. The nor all these drugs that we take have been based on males and males and and females metabolize our horm or excuse me our drugs differently and have different side effects and there's many more women who have like side effects to um to statins and so have like terrible ambient. pain if, if we both took the same then, dose of ambien right? it would affect us differently yeah yeah that, it gives women a hangover Yes. Because we have a longer half half life, so it stays in our system longer. So we need a lower dose. But they did the dosages based on men. Right. And and I have a problem with dosages anyway because I'm married to somebody who's two forty. Right. And six four and a half. Big guy. And big guy. And so I can't give him whenever he gets the he has a recurrent kind of um, lung infections. I can't give him the dose that I would give you or me. I mean, it's not one size fits all. It's never going to go away if I give him that dose. And that should be looked at. We do it in children. We do. But but in terms so of for adults. gender, we've we've been testing all these guys that are generally over 150 pounds and taller than women and right. say that's the dose that women should take too. So so research. They've just come to view that as something that's an issue. Yeah. And medical schools have gotten better about having women in, in well, medical I, classes. Right. But there are more everything women out there now. is gender biased. Right. And testosterone is the biggest gender bias that I deal with now because I've I've um, gotten rid of all the other gender biases mm -hmm. that uh, I had before. I don't have to deal with most of them, except testosterone is not paid for well, for women. But it is for men. It is for men. And the best kind of testosterone for women is pellets. And they will they will pay par a part of it for men. But for women, they just deny it with insurance. So that's a, a huge issue. And it makes it more well, of an expense. And because the regulatory agencies don't understand what's going on with replacing hormones, they regulate testosterone as a dangerous drug because of all the abuse of athletes and, and others. Well, that's ridiculous. And it's our, but it's, our own But hormone. it's the way it's set. That's like saying estrogen in the regulations. Is, is a, should be a controlled substance. It's one of our hormones. That makes no sense. So testosterone... I don't care who abuses it. People abuse everything. They can abuse right. water. They can. You can drink True. yourself. Drink all your electrolytes. Out yeah, you can drink die. yourself into an illness by right. drinking water. Yeah. I mean, you can abuse anything. I mean, we now know that like the um, sprays. You can you you know you can abuse that. What's True. in the spray cans? We still have spray cans. Aerosol. Yeah. But we don't have testosterone for women, and we don't have testosterone that you can easily use. They're making it very hard with their. Um, the laws that the regulatory, the regulatory systems have so tight, are so, so tight, complex. and so they're making it very difficult. This is kind of another subject because it's okay. not about just about women, but no. but basically they make it so difficult that doctors will just say, "I'm not doing that. That's too much trouble," which is one of their goals. That's right. That's right. As always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.